Today, I'm going to talk about Kawasaki disease. For introduction, Kawasaki disease is a systemic febrile condition affecting mostly children who are less than 5 years old. It is a vasculitis of small and medium-sized vessels, example is coronary artery. The etiology of Kawasaki disease remains unknown, but there are studies that show that it is possibly due to bacterial toxins or viral agents with genetic predisposition to Kawasaki disease as well. There is probable association with streptococcal or staphylococcal agents. This is the diagnostic criteria for Kawasaki disease. The children has to be having fever which is lasting for at least 5 days and also at least 4 out of the 5 of the following criteria, which are bilateral non purulent conjunctivitis where there is red eyes also mucosal damage of the oropharynx which includes strawberry tongue which is very well known for Kawasaki disease this picture over here shows the strawberry tongue where you can see the white spots on the tongue and other mucosal changes are injected pharynx, red lips or dry and fissured lips the third criteria is changes in extremities which includes edema or erythema of the hands or feet and also disquamation, which means peeling of the skin, which typically begins periangually, which means peeling of the skin that starts from the nails. Fourth criteria is rash. In Kawasaki disease, the rash is usually truncal rash, and there are polymorphous but non vesicular. And the final criteria would be cervical lymphadenopathy. So, the diagnostic criteria to summarize, we have to have fever at least five days and also. Out of these five criteria over here, we have to have at least four of them to diagnose Kawasaki disease. For investigations, we can do full blood count. And in Kawasaki disease, we expect to see anemia, leukocytosis, and thrombocytosis. Thrombocytosis, which means high platelet level, is normally seen in convalescent phase, in the recovery phase. Second investigation is ESR and CRP which are the erythrocyte sedimentation rate and the C-reactive protein level. Usually they are elevated and this indicates active inflammation. Third is liver function test, where we will be able to see urease, alanine aminotransferase and hypoalbuminemia in Kawasaki disease. For UFIM, the urine full examination and microscopic examination can see pyuria, which is more than 10 white blood cells per high power field. And also chest x-ray can be done. In Kawasaki disease, usually chest x-ray will show normal or reticulonodular pattern in 90% of the cases. Can also see some peribronchial coughing, pleural effusion or atelectasis. Whereas for ECG, the electrocardiogram can see prolonged PR interval or deep QF. For echocardiogram, usually it is done in the acute phase to look at the coronary arteries. Because one important complication, which I will explain later, is coronary artery vasculitis causing aneurysm. So echocardiogram to look at coronary arteries, if cannot really see properly, can use CT or MRI angiography. For treatment of Kawasaki disease, the primary treatment is IV immunoglobulin over 10 to 12 hours and also oral aspirin until day 14 of illness or until the patient is afebrile for 2 to 3 days. For maintenance treatment, can give oral aspirin for 6 to 8 weeks or until the ESR and platelet count is normal. If there is coronary aneurysm as the complication, continue to give aspirin until it resolves. Complication of Kawasaki disease, the most important one is coronary vasculitis, which causing coronary artery aneurysm. This vasculitis it is usually asymptomatic and it may manifest as myocardial ischemia, infarction, pericarditis, myocarditis, endocarditis, or heart failure or arrhythmia. This complication usually occurs within two weeks of the illness. 
and affects up to 25% of untreated children. So prompt treatment is important in Kawasaki disease. This is all for this video. Thank you.